families are unique. Just as there's every person living with dementia is unique, every family is unique. And yet people within the family may very well experience and appreciate dementia differently. It turns out there's five different potential reactions to having dementia in the family. The first one, the person is not around, so they don't even recognize that anything is going on because there's no exposure to the dementia. So they don't see that there's anything happening. It's a mystery to them because they live elsewhere. They don't make the connection. Second, there is awareness. Well, actually, there's not awareness. They're not even aware there are changes. They are around. Wait a minute. How could you be around and not see that? Well, it turns out some people just don't pick up on it because the changes have been gradual or they're episodic and the person's just totally missing it. The third possibility is they are aware, they get it, but they just don't think it's a big deal. It's no big deal. I mean, yeah, 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 she's had a couple of fender benders. Well, you know, everybody has that kind of thing. It's not a big deal. I get it, but it's not worth getting all excited about. It's just dementia. A lot of people have it. Then there's the third, oh wait, this is the fourth one. Remember, this is like, there was no exposure, so I don't even know something's going on. I'm aware, oh wait, I'm around, but not aware. I am aware, but I don't think it's a big deal. Now we have, oh my God, this is awful. This is dreadful. This is terrible. We've got to do something. An emergency reaction to, oh no, this is really bad. And then we have this last one over here. I don't think it's dementia. No, 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 no. That's not what it's. It, it's something else. It's got to be something else. I refuse to believe this is dementia. This can't be dementia. I just know it's not. So we might call that denial or inability to actually accept that what's happening here is something we can't fix and something that is progressive and something that ultimately is terminal. I just can't accept that. So we want to look at who's in the family and who's thinking what and who believes what, because we can't fix them. <laughs> but it's really important if I'm partnering that I know who's where, believing what. And here's an idea. You need a third party. And that third party, not you, not the person living with the changes, but that third party may help you navigate the difference between family members, because family dynamics can get really messy when we're on different pages. And trying to bring everybody onto the same page may or may not work. You've got plenty to say grace over. You've got plenty to try to cope with and deal with as a partner. Maybe it's time to bring a team member on who's better at working with family members because there's frequently some history here that might get in your way. And because you're going to need to live with your family, maybe letting someone else help figure out how to transition might be more beneficial than you trying to fix it on your own. It's just a thought. And I know sometimes you do what you want to do, but I'm going to encourage you. I'm whispering because I'm going to try to whisper you into believing me that in many cases, if you'll let your hands go and let go of it and let someone else provide the support that is needed, it actually goes better. And sometimes you might actually find that one of your family members, a stakeholder, needs to step away for a while until they get in a different place. And that's not because you're being mean. It's just not working. And it's actually making your job much more difficult. So having family members in different places, pretty common, but it's very challenging. <laughs>